on earth even dares to throw hate on the classic sunshine girly and grumpy guy trope? That's why in this video we'll be showing you the top 10 romance anime with cheerful girl and cold guy. Number 10, Kanojo ga flag wo oritara. What if you had the power to see how your love life would turn out? That's the case for Atate Sota, a high school boy who could see flags on top of people's heads that show their destiny. But instead of using his gift to find true love, he isolates himself from everyone because of a tragic past. That is, until four stunning girls decide to invade his space in his heart. <laughs> So one thing that makes this series stand out is the concept. I mean, when did you ever see another series use destinies and flags at the same time? There's also the part where you're going to be surprised the series actually has a lot of twists, which makes it stand out even more. The art style also reminds me a lot of the classic 2000s vibes, and it's a rare kind of show where the characters have actually become the highlight. Number 9, My Love Story with Yamada-kun at level 999. <laughs> Breakups are hard, especially when your ex dumps you for someone else. Despite being so pretty, Akane still fell victim to that, and because she's still hung up with her ex, she logs into Forest of Savior, the MMO they used to play together, and signs up for an in-person event where she hopes to crush him. But things get complicated when she meets Akito Yamada, a legendary gamer who is also her guildmate. Yamada, it reminds me of the icy guy and his cool female colleague from the previous season, under a different context and with a bit more expressiveness. What makes it so charming is how the two MCs are actually really different and similar at the same time. It makes it more entertaining than your average shoju anime, and you feel this unique appeal while watching it. Nothing's better than gaming and romance. Number 8, The Dangers in My Heart. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being a killer who has a crush on your victim. No, this isn't book talk. It's the situation of Koyutaru Ichikawa, who dreams of killing his classmate, Anna Yamada, the most popular girl in school. But his plans go wrong when he realizes that she's actually pretty dumb, who has no idea what he's up to. The Dangers in My Heart has had quite an interesting run from a full-on cringe fest to an incredibly wholesome ride filled with great character development, and that actually will make your heart feel in danger. It's quite a refreshing take on rom-com itself, and who doesn't love it when the girl takes the lead? It might feel generic, but it all actually break your expectations, and the way the characters connect is something else. All that's left is for Yamada to step on Ichikawa, and we have a full-on Nagatoro scene. Situation here. Number seven, code breaker. Some people say that opposites attract, but what if your crush is a cold blooded killer who could set people on fire with his eyes? That's the dilemma that Sakura Sakura Koji faces in this thrilling and hilarious story of love, justice, and supernatural powers. Sakura is a sweet and strong girl who believes in doing the right thing, even if it means kicking some butt along the way, while Rei is a mysterious and moody boy who has a dark secret that he hides from everyone. When their paths cross, sparks fly, literally. Sakura's 
a lot of people fell in love with it because it has cool fight scenes and awesome powers, but there's the romance part that's just so underrated. Though the animation isn't godly like Demon Slayer, the storyline along with great character writing make up for it. Rom-coms can get boring sometimes, so Codebreaker adds that extra violence we all need. Number 6, Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Some people dream of fame and fortune, but Anne Halford only wants one thing, to be a silver sugar master. She has a sweet tooth, and at the same time, a total sweetheart. She's willing to do anything to achieve her goal, but Anne needs a bodyguard who can protect her from the dangers of the road, and the only one she can afford is Chale, a grumpy and gorgeous fairy who hates humans. Will Anne be able to melt Chale's icy attitude, or will he make her life a living hell? Sometimes a sweet little fantasy is needed. It's so sweet, in fact, that you might just get diabetes after watching the entire season. It doesn't have a lot of action like Codebreaker, but the wholesomeness does the job. With a neat art style and animation, it's perfect for shoujo lovers because you'll always feel soft and fluffy inside. Number 5, Aho Girl. <laughs> If you think high school is hard, try being Yoshiko Hanabakate, a girl so dumb she makes a rock look like Einstein. She consistently hangs out with and annoys her studious and serious childhood friend, Akuru Akutsu, whom Yoshiko's mother wants to marry. Yoshiko also strikes up a friendship with the sensible Sayaka Sumino. Together with Akuru, Sayaka tries to rein in Yoshiko's shenanigans. <laughs> I hope girl takes time for it to actually be good, but once everyone's introduced, you'll probably never stop laughing. The story is straightforward because, well, it's just about an idiot and the people who have to suffer because of said idiot. It's just pure fun and the jokes hit the mark most of the time. There's a little bit of fan service too for all you cultured weebs out there, but it's not too much and it still feels kind of pure. Number 4, Devil's Line. <laughs> Imagine being assaulted by a vampire only to be saved by a cop who's half vampire. That's the terrifying situation of Tsukasa Tiara finds herself in when she encounters Yuki Anzai, who's part of the clandestine police force that tracks down vampires in Tokyo. As they get closer, they discover that they have more in common than they thought, and more to fear. But as their relationship grows, so does his lust and hunger for her blood. <laughs> One of the highlights of this series is that the bond between the two main characters feels mature. It also has some similarities to Tokyo Ghoul, although not as intense, and Devil's Line focuses more on the romantic side of things. It's a bit more dramatic than most other entries on this list, so if you want a little bit of spice, then what are you waiting for? Check it out! Number 3, Taisho Otame Fairy Tale. <laughs> But some people say that life is what you make of it, but what if you have nothing to make it with? That's the case for Tamahiko Shima, a 19-year-old who lost his right hand, his mother, and his place in society in one tragic accident. Now he lives alone in a remote cabin in the mountains of Chiba, where his only companions are books, birds, and his own bitter thoughts. He's given up on his future, and his only goal is to die with dignity. If you're into more innocent romance and actually believe in this thing called faith, then Taisho Otami Fairy Tale might just be for you. It's a refreshing change of pace from all the drama and the crying and the fan service. From the character designs alone, you could already tell it's going to be wholesome. Number 2, Welcome to NHK. Huh? 
Imagine living in a tiny apartment surrounded by anime DVDs, books, and cup noodles. Tachurio Sato, a 22-year-old hikamori who suffers from extreme social anxiety and paranoia. He thinks the world's out to get him and that a secret organization called NHK is behind his misery. But his boring and lonely existence is about to change when a cute and quirky girl named Misaki knocks on his door. She claims to be a savior and offers to help him overcome his hikamori condition. Huh? A lot of people already think that Welcome to NHK is a masterpiece, and that's because the storyline has never been seen before, and it's told brilliantly. I mean, this is practically an anime for conspiracy theorists. The characters are well fleshed out, the plot is insane, and the twist is just immaculate. It's like the author thought, you know what would make a good story? Psychological disorders. And it worked! Number 1, My Teen Romantic Comedy. <laughs> Do you think life's meaningless? If you answer yes to this question, then you might relate to Hachiman Hikagaya, a cynical loner who has given up on love, friendship, and happiness. He spends his days mocking his peers and dreaming of a peaceful existence, but his life's about to change when he's forced to join the service club, a group of volunteers who help with others and their problems. Origairu isn't the first one to do this, but it is the one that pulled it off the best. I mean, Hikagaya is just cringy and relatable at the same time. The romance and storytelling was also really good, and there's this dynamic between the main characters that makes everything feel anxious. It's not relaxing and wholesome, but somehow it feels so good to watch. That's why it's at the top of the top 10 romance anime where cheerful girl in love with cold guy.